Hi, my name is Jeremy, and this video is the second in a series chronicling all of the guitars used by Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters throughout the history of the band. Welcome back to my documentary series covering all the guitars used by the band Foo Fighters. If you haven't seen part one of this series yet, a link to that video will be in the description below. As I mentioned in part one, I'm a huge guitar nerd and an even bigger fan of the Foo Fighters. This project is a result of combing through tons of pictures, videos, live concert footage, and interviews featuring the band to piece together a definitive collection of all the guitars used for performances and recording sessions. In this part, we will cover the tour of the band's second album, The Color and the Shape, through the recording of the fourth album, One by One. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out the other links in the description below. With that out of the way, let's get back to the guitars. Following the recording of the band's second album, The Color and the Shape, the Foo Fighters found their new drummer in Taylor Hawkins, best known at the time as the drummer for Alanis Morissette. After Taylor joined, the group began to tour their new record, but it wasn't long before guitarist Pat Smear made the decision to step down from his role. He agreed to continue playing shows with the band until they could find a suitable replacement. For a brief period, Pat can be seen playing songs from The Color and the Shape with the Foos. During this 1997-98 tour, Dave can mostly be seen playing a white, three-pickup SG Custom likely a vintage model made between the 70s and 80s. He's also seen using his black Explorer much more, along with a new Gibson Explorer in an aged white finish with gold hardware. These guitars, along with his RD standard, will be seen on stage with him through the 2000 tour. For the last few months he was in the band, Pat was playing his black Hagstrom F200 model, visible in the video for Everlong, which would later be used as the primary inspiration for his signature model in 2011. He can also be seen using a very rare Hagstrom Jimmy D'Aquisto jazz guitar during the sessions for The Color and the Shape, an odd choice for the record considering it was an acoustic guitar fitted with a neck pickup. In the music video for Monkey Wrench, Pat can be seen playing a white F200 with gloves no less. In this video, we see Dave playing a Gretsch White Falcon. This is the only time he is seen with this guitar, but during a 1998 concert he plays a 1960 reissue Gretsch 6125 model in olive green for a few songs. Finally, after playing his final song with the band at the MTV Awards, Pat passes the torch to Foo Fighters' second guitarist, Franz Stahl. Franz had been a member of Dave's previous band, Scream, and toured with the Foo Fighters up until writing began for their third album, There's Nothing Left to Lose. Of the available concert footage from this era, Franz mostly sticks to a handful of guitars. His most commonly used model is a gold top Gibson Les Paul Deluxe, likely from the 70s, 80s era. He is seen with this guitar throughout his career and still has it to this day. He also played a Wine Red Les Paul Custom in a few performances, as well as an Epiphone Riviera in Silver Sparkle in a handful of occasions. For the My Hero music video, Franz can be seen with a black and red Fender-style Stratocaster with a humbucker in the bridge position. As the band began writing sessions for their third album, the difficult decision was made to let Franz go due to creative differences. Thus, the recording sessions for There Is Nothing Left To Lose were comprised of only Dave, Nate, and Taylor. As a trio, they retreated to Virginia to record the album in Dave's home-built studio inside his house. Dave recalls using his Trini Lopez for most of this record. During the sessions, we see his Black Explorer, a Gibson Southern Jumbo Acoustic, and a white Telecaster present. Speaking of Telecasters, following the release of There Is Nothing Left To Lose, Dave is seen playing a Black Telecaster Deluxe for several of the band's televised performances, a rare sight for Grohl who seldom strays from his usual Gibsons. After completing the record, the Foo Fighters needed to find their new guitarist. After conducting open auditions, they finally settled on Chris Shiflett, who has been with the band ever since. Chris, like Pat Smear, has used tons of different guitars over the years. My goal in this series is to try and document as many as I can find. When Shiflett joined up with the band in 1999, his main guitar arsenal included a 1982 white Gibson Les Paul Custom, which he still uses to this day, as well as a black Les Paul Standard and a Gibson Explorer in white. On this white Explorer, Chris placed a small Foo Fighters logo sticker on the lower bout. Along with these guitars was a standard black Gibson Flying V that Shiflet used in concert and in the music video for times like these. Other guitars visible in Chris's hands are a black Gibson ES-135 and a 1990 Gibson SG Custom in white. Both of these guitars were recently sold in Shiflet's Reverb store. Regarding bassist Nate Mendel, he is rarely seen without his trusty 1971 red P bass during this period, save for a few rare performances where he's spotted using a Steinberger bass with no headstock. Here's one uh, our bass player really wanted to play, but we wouldn't let him. Yeah, he wanted to use that on the road. We said, you know what? <laughs> You're fired. You're fired. Yeah. Nate is also seen playing a rare Ampeg AEB-1 scroll bass starting around this period. 
During the tour for There Is Nothing Left To Lose, Dave was primarily using his Explorers. He had at least two in ebony finish, with one sporting a sticker with the Nixon Watches logo on the pickguard. During this time, he is also frequently seen using the aged white Explorer with gold hardware. Also frequently visible on this tour are his white Les Paul Custom, as well as his Gibson RD Standard. Although for this tour, he made the unique decision to mount a Boss DM2 delay pedal on the body of the guitar to manipulate and produce wild sounds by changing the speed of the delay while playing. This effect can be heard on the outro of the studio version of Aurora and seen in live video clips of the band performing. Also making its debut appearance this tour is the delightfully tacky Gibson Budweiser Dale Earnhardt Jr. Les Paul. Dave can be seen using this Les Paul for performances of stacked actors and other tunes during the tour. Here's a clip of Dave talking about the guitar in 2007. That's cool. On that note, this is a Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, guitar. It's uh, made out of um, NASCAR parts, but it's King of Beers. Another interesting guitar that makes a few appearances during this time is a Gibson ES347, an uncommon Gibson semi-hollow body model in a sunburst finish with a bound headstock and a small coil tap switch. This guitar originally had a Bigsby vibrato attached, as we can see in its first appearance being played by Shiflet, opposite Grohl playing a red Gibson Explorer. Dave plays this ES347 during the famous Tabernacle show with the Bigsby removed. The next time this guitar shows up is in 2007 being played by Chris in the video for Long Road to Ruin. Dave is also seen using a black Gibson SG standard at the Tabernacle show, and although this guitar is seldom used on stage, a photo from the recording sessions for One by One shows a similar model in Grohl's hands. The recording of the Foo's fourth album was difficult to say the least, citing personal issues and a lack of progress in the initial recording sessions, an entire album's worth of recordings were scrapped and re-recorded during this time. Although very little information is available regarding the guitars used for the recording of this album, producer Nick Raskalinix shares in this interview the guitar used for the intro of All My Life. This is an 80s Les Paul standard, and this has been on a lot of records. Well, could you but, just name a couple of the records it's been on? Um, <laughs> so, awesome. this is that. If we were to take Dave's word for it, it's likely that his Trini Lopez was still handy for these sessions, and it's possible that his new Ampeg Dan Armstrong model was being used as well. We'll talk more about this guitar in the next episode. That concludes part two of the series. In the next video, we'll cover the tour for One by One up through the recording of the band's sixth album, Echoes, Silence, Patience, and Grace. Remember to like this video and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. You can find a link to my original music below, as well as a link to my Foo Fighters tribute band if you're interested in checking us out. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in part three.